think that was the question on a lot of people's minds when you, uh, you know, went on IR. So how are you doing, first of all? Yeah, uh, I mean, today I, I feel good. You know, I have been for the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, obviously a frustrating season uh, on my end. Uh, you know, just with the with the health stuff. But I think most of that is, you know, kind of subsided. And um, you know, this is always kind of a tough day of the of the year. But as far as health goes, you know, I, I think I'm I'm good. I've been you know working out and doing everything I can off to the side. What, what Do you still want to play this year? Yeah, I mean, I I don't think anybody, <laughs> you know wants to walk away from the game right after the season. So I think that's something that obviously takes some time to kind of ponder and think about and, and talk about. Um, but, you know, everybody, I think everybody wants to have a chance to you know, go out on their own terms and, you know, I'm no different. So, uh, but like I said, I'm not going to make a decision one way or the, uh, the other uh, anytime soon. So, um, you know, I know I've, I've had a lot of time off the last right, <laughs> couple months. I sure yeah, I mean, I've been I've been trying to keep myself busy around here and helping out in different different ways with the guys. So haven't really thought about it too much, and uh, no rush. So I'll take take some more time, however much however much time I need, and let kind of the dust settle, and um, you know, kind of go from there. What were you dealing with with the neck exactly? You said some of the things. That yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get into specifics, but um, obviously it was, uh, you know, something that was uh, severe enough to, you know, keep me out for the rest of the season, but uh, not severe enough to call it, you know, career ending. So um, there was no surgery involved or anything like that, which was good. Uh, so um, I'll kind of keep it at that. I think everything is, uh, you know, gotten, gotten back to full health. TJ, you defended coach and the program and what stuff going forward, kind of vocally on Twitter and elsewhere. What do you see here that gives you that? <laughs> well, you know, I, everybody in this locker room, everybody in those meeting rooms, uh, you know, you're with each other every single day for, you know, so many months. I, th I think you, um, there's a special relationship. There's a special brotherhood that you form. And I think anybody in this locker room will defend their teammates, defend the coaches, because we're all in this thing together. Uh, you know, I think, you know, it's not a surprise. I mean, it's, the season didn't go the way we wanted to. But I think uh, when, when, you, when you take a deep breath, when you kind of look back at it, um, in my mind, it's not, it's not something that needs – you know, drastic changes. It's something that uh, you know, when, when you look at, when you when you reflect on the season, it's something that you say, "Hey, man, we wish we could have done that a little bit better that game." Or, uh, "Man, if we made that one other play this next game." I, I think that's what it comes down to. That's the difference between being where we are now and being ready to, uh, you know, jump into a playoff game. So, uh, and I know the guys in this locker room, um, they they believe in, everybody believes in ourselves. Everybody believes in this team. We believe in the uh, leadership and. Uh, just didn't go our way, but uh, I think there have been improvements. Um, you know, small improvements here. I think the one of you know, <laughs> you guys are going to kill me for saying that, obviously, because we finished worse than we did last year. But I think the run game improved. I think the defense the last uh, couple months has, has has been drastically improved. So there's obviously things everybody needs to get better at individually and as a team. But overall, I think uh, everybody in this locker room's bought in and. Um, you know, ready, ready to get started for next season. You so. talked the about offense the with, with Stafford's numbers being way down compared to the past. You don't think the offense needs some tweaking, adjusting, something? That's not my job to <laughs> speculate on any anything there. But yeah, I think everybody in this locker room. At the end of the day, you sit here and and you reflect. I don't think anybody in this locker room feels like. Um, you know, there's there's nothing that they need to improve on. I, I think everybody can look back, myself, you know, myself included. Although I was limited to seven games, whatever it was. Um, look, you, you look at your things. You, you look at yourself to to see things you can improve on. I think everybody's uh, the exact same way. So. You, you put on Twitter uh, when you were in Stony, we're going back and forth just about that. I did. I was Stony. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the negativity and and then you know just. It's it's so much, and it gets to a point where you can't take it. Like like, can you explain that? Like, how bad is it? Like from people like us, people like me, people like the fans. Um, 
I guess the big picture is that everybody's in this thing together. I mean, you guys want us to see you guys want to see us do well. We want to play well. We know our fans are are diehard. I mean, just look at the games that we play on the road and and, and you see the blue and silver. I mean, it's just it's unbelievable the support we have. And I've got kind of a different perspective than a lot of guys in, in this locker room where, you know, I was a fan of this team for a long time growing up. I've lived here. I'm going to live here the rest of my life. Uh, I get it, man. I understand it. Uh, but there are times where, you know, Things kind of boil over a little bit. Obviously, when you have a season like this, frustration is going to come. I mean, I mean, the, the criticism is going to come. Everything is going to come from all different directions. Um, at the end of the day, you realize, you know, we, 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 the this, this city diver, deserves a, a winning football team, and, and and we want to give it to them. Unfortunately, it didn't happen this year. But um, I guess I guess it really comes down to, you know, don't don't give up on us. You know, I, I guess that's what I'm saying. It's it's hard to kind of sell hope right now after <laughs> after a six and ten season, but uh, I, I do see I do see some good things happening for this football team and for this franchise. And um, I don't think there's any any city uh, in, in the country that deserves a championship more than Detroit. So uh, our players our players recognize that. Everybody recognizes that, and that's the ultimate goal: to get it done. Our fans have been. Uh, Phenomenal, though. I mean, you guys have a different job. You guys have to, you know, critique every little thing, which <laughs> which we understand. But uh, the fans, the fans deserve it. I think they've been through a lot. So, you <laughs> so. mentioned, you mentioned the buy-in. I mean, what, you know, maybe that's where some of the negativity came. Mentioned from. the what? The buy-in from that you said everybody you know here is, is bought in. It, it didn't necessarily seem like that was the case early in the season. How long did that buy-in take for? This I, you know, I, yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't say. Um, I guess I wouldn't say the buy-in didn't exist. I think it's just like anything, man. You go through you go through a change uh, as drastic as we did. There's there's going to be there's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be some things that that you got to learn how to how to practice different, how to prepare different, how to meet different. I, I think that being said, I think that kind of takes a little bit longer uh, sometimes. Uh, no excuses, um, but I think maybe you know that was that was maybe an issue that we had early <coughs> on in the season, and uh, you know, I, I'd never question. The guys' effort, or the guys wanting to be here, or the buy-in. I think it's just something at the end of the day. Um, obviously, it would be nice to get off to a lot faster start in the season uh, to kind of, you know, shred some of those questions and some of those doubts. But uh, at the end of the day, everybody in this locker room stood together, man, and that, that's what it's all about. Was it more drastic, maybe, than some people? Thought? I don't know. I mean, you know, we've got a lot of a lot of young guys in here. You know, this is my tenth season doing it. I've kind of seen it. Uh, you know, different coaches, uh, different approaches, any way you can. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's about just you know ad adjusting as fast as you can, adapting to uh, you know n new kind of new uh, new way and and getting rolling. So, um, but like I said, there's no excuse, man. We just I think that'll be a learning experience that you know we can take in the next year. Matthew's been a lightning rod to a lot of people in this town. What is mm -hmm. his demeanor? What don't we see, or is there stuff that we don't see outwardly that in here he is like the quarterback that everybody wants to fire and all that kind of stuff? Or is that just who he is and we'll never, we'll never see it and he doesn't exist? That um, i got to be honest with you, I don't watch a lot of his press conferences, but uh, from what I hear, uh, <laughs> you know, I think, I think, yeah, I think, you know, you guys might be looking for more sometimes, but to me that that's not really being a leader of a football team it's what you say behind closed doors it's what you say in the huddle it's what you say out of practice and i think uh you know from that aspect he's got the respect of every single guy in this locker room guys want to play for him guys want to win for him um you know i know at least in my experience when <laughs> when you get him hit uh feels bad man because he's a guy who lays it all on the line not just you know not not that he's a good friend or None of those other reasons. Just you see that guy. You see you see how hard he works. You see the the work that he puts into it throughout the week. Um, like man, this guy's in 100%. He's dedicated. I got to do the same thing. And I think that's contagious. Um, you could sit here and talk about you know <laughs> how his press conferences go or whatever. But I don't think any of the players worry about that. He's he's the leader of this locker room and, and will be for a long time. And um, you know I think everybody in this locker room's got his back. Did you ever get pissed off? I mean, like you can ask him that question. I know. <laughs> you can ask him. I think everybody, uh, I think every every football player gets gets pissed off at, at one point or another. Some more than than the next, but everybody definitely shows passion and emotion. He's no different. If uh, if Golden Tate wasn't traded, how do you think that impacts this season? No idea. I mean, I think it 
I have no idea. It seemed like it really hurt you guys on offense after that. Um, you know, Golden was definitely a guy that, you know, his, his stats don't <laughs> lie. I mean, you know, he's definitely a playmaker. Um, but, you know, I, I can't sit here and say our, our team would have been any better with him. I don't, I don't know. It's a hypothetical question. So, uh, I don't think as far as the locker room and that, that, that the whole thing went down, uh, yeah, obviously guys were bummed because, you know, he was a good friend to a lot of guys in this locker room. But at the, at the end of the day, it's like we, we don't get paid to make those decisions. Uh, we go out and try to do our job the best we can. And uh, that, that thing, at least in my mind, it, it didn't linger at all. It's like next man up, you know, Powell, go show us what you got. And um, everybody saw the opportunities he got yesterday. I think, uh, you know, he, he's definitely going to be a guy that, and can fill that role. So, um, you know, everybody in this locker room. If, if you say, if you say the trade hurt, and you know you're offending somebody else because the next guy that's getting ready to play now might not think he's got the support <laughs> of the team going forward. So, uh, you roll with what you got, man. And I think uh, you, you just got to adjust. Season's about hitting adversity and, and how well you can adjust. One other question about your future. Have the Lions? What have they told you about you know, your future? I haven't had any discussions there. I think, um, you know, when I got put on R, it was definitely a, a tough day. Um, but the f really only conversation we had was, um, you know, how can I help this team uh, moving forward without playing this year? You know, and, and we came up with some some things, uh, you know, more specific to the offensive line that I was doing with those guys. But uh, that, that, that was the extent of our discussion. There was nothing talking about future. Uh, we got a long way to go before we got to worry about any of that. You, you've so. been around the league a long time, though. Obviously, you know, you know, money, the injuries. Yeah. Everything. So, how, do you expect to be back next year? How do you think that? What do you think happens? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, I, I, I would love to play. Um, I, I would love to play going forward. Um, but there's also a lot of people I need to talk to before <laughs> any decision like that is made. I mean. Got to wait for the dust to settle. It's never, never good to make decisions uh, when you're emotional. Um, so I probably shouldn't have sent that tweet button to Stoney yesterday, but uh, <laughs> he, he deserved it. He deserved it for a while. So uh, yeah, you don't make you don't make big decisions when when you're emotional. You kind of take take some time, let let everything settle down. Still and emotional for you right now, then, a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's, it's always this man. This day this day always sucks. You know, there's and they, there's going to be 53 guys uh, that are. You know, hooting and hollering and happy as hell, and, and everybody else in the league is, is going to be feeling like we do today. So it's tough. Um, Got to take some time to reflect, take some time to, uh, you know, look back, see uh, see what you can do different, see what you can do better, you know, to help this team win football games. And um, there's no rush to get into that. You know, we got a lot, a lot, long time before we put a helmet on again, long time before we get back in this locker room as a team. And if I can be a part of that, then. Um, and I would love the chance. Yeah. What's it like watching a game like yesterday? And you see guys, you know, both teams have like eight, ten starters out, and mm -hmm. more going out during the game, including Aaron, a guy you know as well as anybody. What's it like to sit and watch a game like that? Um, yeah. Those games are always kind of tough because obviously we were in the same position last year, uh, you know, except we were playing at, at our house. Uh, you just see everybody just, I mean, you know it's your last game. You know it's the last time you get to go out there and put the helmet on with every single guy in this locker room. Uh, there's always going to be changes. There, there always is every year. Um, it's one It's one last game just to, just to I mean, let it all out. I know it sounds corny, but uh, you sit there and you think about it. And I got a couple months to heal up. I'm going to go out there and, and give it her all no matter what. I don't care about dropping in the draft. I don't care about any of those other headlines. Our job is to go out there and compete every single day. And and uh, that's what those guys did yesterday. And it was uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. They might have asked you this already, so I apologize if they've asked already in advance. But if they come to you and say, hey, you can take a pay cut or you can leave, would you be open to a pay cut? I mean, I would be open to playing next year. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't care what anything else looks like if I get another chance to you know, be on this team, then uh, that would be a great opportunity for myself. So, so, so just to be clear, that would be a you'd be open to that if that was the only option. Oh, you can interpret it however you want. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I was, I was pretty clear with that. Answer, yeah, so. no, I know. I was just it's part of the decision you have to make. Is it still is it still dependent on how you're feeling a month from now, two months from now, or is that more of a you sure? Cross that bridge? Yeah, sure. I mean, I've uh, you know, I'm not a third year guy. Uh, you know, I'm a 10th year guy. I've played a long time. Um, I've obviously have certain goals and aspirations that I want to accomplish, uh, which, you know, 
uh, I have not yet. So, um, well, like I said, man, it's it, it ask me these questions in about two months when when I'm a little bit more uh, clear minded and, and less emotional, I think would be <laughs> be a better time to answer. Yeah. Do you want, do you want that, to play in Minnesota kind of finished off your season, the diving test? Yeah. Like, I don't probably know the answer, but you regret doing that and say, why did I do that? No, yeah. no. I mean, I never, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, that point of the game, it was obviously pretty frustrating, especially being a part of that offensive line. Um, wasn't our best day. It's pretty obvious. Um, but yeah, anytime you, you, you have a chance to uh, make a play, Obviously, as an offense lineman, you, you hope you don't have to make too many tackles during a season, but that was just one of those plays where um, you got to lay it out, man. You got to do it for the team. If, if they, honestly, my first thought going after the guy was try to get the ball back, <laughs> you know, try to try to get the ball back, try to get some momentum going back on our side. But um, injuries happen. I mean, it, it, it could have easily happened if I just was standing there and somebody blindsided me too. So uh, you lay it on the line. That's our job. You go out there, you do everything you can to try to win. And that was just one of those plays where it felt like I, like I could have got the guy, would have would have got the guy. Look at the tape. No, nah, no, I think the guy was. Uh, it was questionable, kind of side back, whatever. But uh, you guys want to be impressed with some speed, and I'm not trying to brag, but go go watch that play again, man. I was, I was gonna I was gonna catch him. I was gonna catch, I had a I had an angle at about a 20 yard head start. I was I was gonna catch him. So I stand by that till the day I die. Do you want to keep playing, or do you see something here that you find intriguing that could happen? Both. I think when I signed here. Um, the biggest thing was I, I want to be a part of something big in this city. I want to be a part of a, of a football team that uh, that the fans deserve. Um, that was really kind of the driving force. Uh, and like I said, you can attribute that to me you know, growing up here, living here, and being a fan of this team, whatever it is. But uh, that was obviously something that <laughs> if I if we could have gotten done as a team. Um, That'd be that'd be really special, man. So I think that uh, both of them. I, I think I loved. You know, this is this is all I really know playing football, um, and this this city des deserves something special, and uh, it'd just be a, a, an awesome opportunity to be able to uh, have that opportunity. How, yeah. good, how good do you think Frank's gonna be? I think Frank's got a a great future. I mean, the guy. Ever since he got here, you know, it's it's not easy to come in as a young lineman and be thrown into the starting role, especially with some of the defensive tackles you got to block nowadays. Um, but just the, the the way he approaches the game, I mean, it, it, sitting in the meetings and uh, asking questions. I mean, I think I really bonded with him uh, this year just because he was so urgent to learn and just to learn you know new techniques and learn everything you can about defenses and uh, he, he, he wants he wants to be great and that, that's something that as an older guy to have an opportunity to kind of teach him a little bit maybe take him under my wing was was an honor I mean it's an honor for me anytime if somebody asks me questions because that obviously means you know they might think uh, something special about me which was which was great I mean and, and he's got a great future man he's he's strong kid big kid smart kid uh, great athlete. I think you know he's he's only going to get better, and I think he definitely had games this year where he flashed, um, you know, some all-pro type of football. Uh, that's that's not a it's not a big statement. I mean, he's got that type of ability, so um, definitely got a very very bright future in this league. Yeah. How about the line as a whole? I mean, it, you know, I know there's some rough spots, obviously, in the Minnesota game, that Chicago game. But, yeah. Um, where, where do you think this line is heading into next year? Yeah, well, I think there's definitely uh, room for improvement. There, nobody in that room feels like we've reached the pinnacle of, uh, you know, our, our abilities or, or, you know, how good we can be. I think we've had games where he, we, we flashed as a unit. Uh, thinking back early in the season, I think, you know, through five or six games, uh, Stafford was, you know, one of the least pressured guys, hit guys. We take a lot of pride in that. And then we have, obviously, the New England game where, uh, you know, carry on's able to, uh, you know, get over 100 yards and Miami game where we, you know, rushed for over 240 or whatever it was. I think uh, you get little bits and pieces, you get little peaks at, at how good we can be if we if we play consistent like that. Obviously, um, I'm not going to sit here and say we had a great season up front because for every great game we had, you could say yeah, that, that, that game was, was pretty bad. 
thinking about Minnesota game especially. But you guys work hard, man. It's a fun room to be in. Uh, it's it's a fun group to, you know, to, to to work out with, to sit in the meetings with, to go practice with. I mean, the guys really enjoy what they do, and and it's it's always a competition of, you know, who who, who can get better. I mean, who, who's going to be the guy that that chases down the interception? I mean, it's it's always a competition. That's all you could ask for because it makes everybody better. So I think. Um, there's evidence of you know taking a step forward this year from last year, and I think um, as long as everybody keeps the right mindset, which they will do, it's, you know, I, I envision another step forward. What were so. you doing on IR, by the way? How were you helping these guys behind the scenes the rest of your life? Yeah, there was some, you know, not to get into specifics, but there was some, uh, you know, just game plan breakdown type things. How many, how many times? You know, this defense end lines up over the left tackle or right tackle. Maybe they've, they have some tendencies when they're on one side or the next, uh, kind of breaking down, you know, I, I said I wouldn't get into specifics, and I am, but uh, <laughs> might as well keep going. But, um, you know, just what, 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 what's the go-to move? I mean, how many times is he successful with this move? Well, how does he set you up? Things like that that I think can help out a little bit. That, you know, I've done that for myself uh, throughout the last few years, and it helped me a lot. So. I felt like it might help the other guys, and I think they enjoyed it. So I, I kind of did. Yeah, I kind of did. I don't know. I mean, I think. Yeah, I don't think my I don't think my wife would be very excited, but uh, I do think it would be something that, uh, you know, if I worked hard and, and really really committed myself to, I think I, I could be decent at it. So, um, but I don't know about sleeping. Here, a couple nights a week. I don't think I don't think my family would like that very much. I'll start with high school. Yeah, it might be better. Yeah, and not that I was communicating with anybody, but uh, no, I wasn't. No, nope, I wasn't. I asked. I got shut down. Uh, no, nope, they, they did not. They did not want that. Would have been a lot of runs. Which uh, no, it's it's. I you know when I was out there, I was basically just trying to hear the play call so I knew what to look for and knew what uh, feedback to give to the guys when we got to the sideline. So. Could you see yourself being like a, a McAfee type? Like you saw him, obviously, as the third man in the booth yesterday. Would that interest you at all? Like, I don't know if I have that type of talent, to no. be honest with you. I think, uh, I think. well, thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. I wish I could say the same about you. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Exactly what I mean. That's funny. I don't know. I think... Uh, Every year this time, uh, well, the older you get, I think the, the more you start to think about uh, the future, what am I going to do next type things. And um, I don't know. I think, uh, you know, I uh, might be, well, when, I, when I get to that uh, point in my career, there might be some opportunities that I'm open for. But uh, when I'm done playing, I, I think I'd like to stay around the game as much as I could, you know, just, uh, um, you know, being around 10 years in the NFL, I think uh, you know, I've got a decent amount of knowledge that, uh, can be showcased, maybe. So, so. so when are you resuming your radio career? I don't know. I don't know. They want you back. 97 one kicked me out, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they'll just let me do some talking with TJs the rest of the, uh, for the next 20 years. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, right now, my only focus is obviously, uh, you know, continue to stay in shape, and uh, when I get to that point, make a decision about about you know next season. So. Can always cover Eastern Michigan football. Dan Leach, play-by-play I love Eastern Michigan football, but I, I, uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't think I would share the booth with him. Or I don't even know if they get many listeners. But yeah, that'd be that'd be something fun calling games. Yeah, it's a good idea. It'd be good place to practice. Yeah, it would. It would. It would. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. Well, Shep. Shep does a good job yeah. too. So, I like Matt. He's a good dude. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. My focus now is not thinking about uh, what I want to do when it's all said and done. It's about uh, taking some time and you know, hoping I get another opportunity to put the helmet on. Yeah. Are you still rehabbing? Like, is there a rehab thing that you're going through, or is it just rest? You know. Uh, like, is it, uh... Yeah. I mean, it, it pretty much. I'm back to you know full workouts and. Um, you know, last week was hitting the sled a little bit, which felt good. So, uh, yeah, I'd say it's pretty much uh, I can continue uh, kind of normal off-season training that I've that I've been doing the last few years. So, ready to get into that. I've had enough time off the last couple of months. So. Yeah. <laughs> Keith, I apologize. Step away for a minute. I know you said you really want to play next year. Mm -hmm. Is it Detroit or bust, or is Detroit a, a much higher priority than, than playing anywhere else for you? Um, 
I haven't really thought about that, to be honest with you. I think, obviously, uh, this is where I live. This is where I'm going to live uh, probably the rest of my life. So, um, you know, my kids are in school here. You know, all my family's around. My wife's family's around. So this is definitely home, ba home base for us. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get to see Rick. I get to see, you know, all these guys. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see what kind of opportunities kind of arise when that time comes. Thank you. Good. Thank you. All right.